only educator that does not need an introduction is Senior Vice Chancellor Jay Hershenson, and he is phenomenal. Good morning. It's a pleasure to be here with so many educators who are committed to the education of our children. I especially want to thank Paula Rosen, whose publication, Education Update, keeps us informed about critical issues in our schools and the people who devote their lives to positively transforming education. Nobody covers this better than Pola, and she deserves our deepest appreciation. <laughs> now, the CUNY Chancellor has said in public settings that I've been associated with the City University of New York since its founding in 1847. This is not true. I actually started working at CUNY in 1970. When people ask how long I've been at CUNY, I usually say eight chancellors. Some people have successful careers because they're geniuses. Others have survival skills. I fall into the latter category. As long as no one is standing behind me, I'm in good shape. Let me now acknowledge the presence of some members of the CUNY family. We have in the room the president of City College, Lisa Koiko. The president of Hunter College, Jennifer Rabb. The president of Gutman Community College, Scott Evanbeck. And a special friend of CUNY, my friend Gail Badillo, whose husband Herman Badillo was deeply devoted to the use of education as the principal instrument of upward mobility, which he exemplified. Please give Gail a big round of applause. Great friends of CUNY, in addition, of course, to the Chancellor, Regent Tillis and Regent C. Give them a big round of applause. Let me just briefly salute today's honorees. In my family, Chancellor Carmen Farina will always be known as our principal because my son Bradley went to PS6 when she was principal there. We saw firsthand how she hired, shaped, and trained the teachers of that great school. Every parent knew who was in charge, who was responsible, and who was leading the way to success. Others will speak of her glowing bio. I just want to say that the entire school system is incredibly fortunate to have such a great educator at its helm. President Ernie Logan earned his Master's of Education at Baruch College CUNY, so we take all the credit for his success. My friend Vice Chancellor Frank Sanchez, who's in charge of student affairs, tells me that if a student just walks through the cafeteria, we count them. No one fights harder for the supervisors and administrators of the public school system than Ernie Logan, and no one has achieved more successes. He's a role model, not only for his membership, but also for the children of our school system. Thank you, Ernie. I hadn't met Ronald P. Stewart before this morning, but I've heard about York Preparatory School, and all I want to point to in my salute to him is that about a third of the applicants have learning disabilities, and they send 100% of them to college. Something wonderful is going on there. <laughs> Dr. Maya Satoro Ning. Her reputation precedes her. We're going to hear a lot about her accomplishments, and it's a great pleasure to meet you this morning. And Dr. David Steiner, whose work on teacher education has been nothing short of revolutionary. We admire him. We adore him. We, we wish him the greatest luck in his next adventure. Last but not least, the Chancellor of the New York State Board of Regents. Everyone in this room knows how fortunate we are that she leads the New York State Board of Regents. And I just want to cite one particular accomplishment. There are two members of the current Board of Regents who were there in the fall of 1999 when CUNY submitted an amendment to its master plan that remanded remediation to the associate degree level and then unanimously 
reaffirmed that decision in 2001. Merrill, do you remember who the other regent was who voted with you to affirm the amendment? Who was that? Anthony Botar. And he's now vice chancellor of the New York State Board of Regents. With their votes in 1999, CUNY and its leadership was able to begin the changes that have transformed public higher education in our city. CUNY went down the road of access with standards, the recruitment of extraordinarily talented faculty members, record-breaking student enrollments, and a reputational renaissance. In the few minutes I have today with you, I want to touch on a few highlights that our chancellor and board of trustees are rightly proud of. They speak to how CUNY is working to address the challenges of access to college and the delivery of top quality higher education. First, by now, I'm sure you've all flipped through the copy of our Salute to Scholars magazine that was on your seats. This is a special issue that highlights the stories of just a few of CUNY's 2015 student winners of nationally competitive awards. Chancellor Milliken <clears throat> last night hosted a reception for the 2015 award winners. The students in the magazine are exceptional, but they are not the exception. Here's the proof. In the last five years, CUNY students and alumni have won 81 National Science Foundation graduate research fellowships which support doctoral research. In the past five years, CUNY students and alumni have won 78 Fulbright fellowships, allowing them to go abroad to conduct postgraduate research or to teach English after earning a CUNY degree. In the past three years, CUNY students and alumni have won six Paul and Daisy Soros Fellowships for New Americans, which support graduate study. That's the highest of any public university system in the Northeast. In the past five years, CUNY students have won 12 Barry M. Goldwater Scholarships, highly competitive, prestigious federal awards that go to students in the STEM disciplines. And we had one Harry S. Truman Scholar this year. I met him last night, Jake Levin from Brooklyn College. I rattled off the names of all the Truman Scholars over the last six years, and he knows and has met every one of them. So what we're doing is we're creating a new network of successful student award winners who will become the leaders of our future. Many of these student winners, and I mean the vast majority, come from the New York City public school system, and many are enrolled in the Macaulay Honors College. We are very proud that approximately 70% of CUNY's freshman class are students who were educated in the New York City public schools. That's just one reason why the university is so deeply invested in collaborating with the Department of Education. I'm only going to mention one partnership program that we do. It's called College Now. There are 20,000 students enrolled in the College Now program within the New York City public school system, 28,000 registrants. More College Now students are pursuing bachelor's degrees than students who haven't participated. They don't only come to CUNY. They go to other institutions. President Kimberly Klein is here from Long Island University, so what we do benefits higher education overall. Most College Now students enroll full time. Fewer College Now students have remedial needs because College Now helps them. College Now shh, is free tuition. You can earn up to 12 credits in high school, transfer that to a public or private college, that helps students in the most demonstrable economic way. It's a fabulous benefit. The people who run college now deserve a great round of applause. The second initiative I want to mention is ASAP, or Accelerated Studies and Associate Programs, which was initiated at the university originally at six community colleges in 2007. President Obama, in January, cited ASAP along with one other program in Tennessee and one in Chicago as an effective model for helping community college students earn associate degrees within three years. Following a very positive external evaluation by MDRC, which is the gold standard, the state of Ohio is now repli replicating CUNY's ASAP on three community college campuses. Recently, the state of Rhode Island and two Connecticut colleges indicated they intend to seek a federal first in the world grant to do the same thing. ASAP encourages attendance in the summer in courses and workshops, block first year courses with fellow students, and consolidated course schedules in the fall, and of course intensive and mandatory advisement, review and support for financial aid eligibility, 
textbook assistance, and free Metro cards, tutoring if needed, and career development. Five cohorts of students have completed the program so far. On the average, 52% of them graduated within three years versus 22% of comparable CUNY community college students. By the way, graduation rates over a three-year period for urban community colleges in this country is 16%. In the most recent cohort, the three-year graduation rate in the ASAP program is 57%. ASAP served 4,300 students last fall. With additional support from Mayor de Blasio and help from Governor Cuomo and the legislature, ASAP is expanding to at least 13,000 students by fall 2017. On Monday night, Mayor de Blasio, City Council Speaker Melissa Mark Viverito, and the City Council, they agreed to provide long-term support for the further expansion of ASAP. John Jay College is launching an ASAP program with the help of the Robin Hood Foundation. Medgar Evers, the College of Staten Island, New York City Tech, they have bought into the program. And Chancellor Milliken has set a goal of more than 25,000 students to be enrolled in ASAP by 2019. This is New York at its best. Why does it succeed? It succeeds because it provides comprehensive, personalized advisement and other essential support services. Full-time advisors intervene when students miss classes. There's tutoring, career development, moral support from start to finish. And it does require full-time study because research indicates there's no substitute for a student being able to attend full-time in order to move towards graduation. An external evaluation at Columbia Teachers College found that CUNY actually saves money on ASAP even though it invests more up front because ASAP students graduate quicker. So you're not paying for them for four years, five years, six years. So it's a privilege for CUNY to provide this important program for the people of New York City. Over 95% of community college graduates stay and work and remain in New York. So they are repaying the investment made in their education many times over. ASAP is clearly the wave of the future. The third point I'll close with is very exciting. It's no coincidence that the president of City College is uh, sitting here with us today. Because CUNY this year opened on her campus the Advanced Science Research Center, along with new facilities, new science facilities for City College. And the fields that are being emphasized in terms of research at CCNY, right on the South Campus, are nanoscience, photonics, structural biology, neuroscience, and environmental sciences. We have founding directors in place, all recruited after international searches, all leaders in their field. So you will see CUNY continuing to play a major, major role in intellectual cross-pollination and partnerships between scientific disciplines and laboratories a literal vertical integration of big ideas. So, in 1847, Townsend Harris, the first U.S. ambassador to Japan and the president of the newly formed Board of Education, founded the Free Academy. That became City College. From the start, his vision was egalitarian, offering public higher education to what he called the whole people, not just the elite of society. Open the doors to all, Townsend Harris said. Let the children of the rich and poor take their seats together and know of no distinction save that of industry, good conduct, and intellect. Those words resonate even more so today. Thank you very much.